Welcome to Share a Pint, where we tap into the craft beer scene. I'm Jerry Hulla, your host. Today I'm talking with John Esposito from Chesapeake Real Ale Brewing. Thanks for being on the show, John. Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, your name is Algonquin for Village at a Big River or Great Shellfish Bay. Right. Uh, so it's clear that looking around here, you can see the uh, large blue crab on the wall. Uh, right. The logo's beautifully burned into the flight boards. Uh, so clearly you embrace the Maryland culture and the history. Absolutely. Uh, so share with us a little bit why that was important when you were developing your identity and your brand. Well, the, the original thought was to have a Chesapeake related name. Mm -hmm. uh, when I started looking around, I didn't want to be just Chesapeake Real mm -hmm. Ale Brewing. Uh, there was already, there's already another Chesapeake brewery, so mm -hmm. I didn't want to cause confusion there, mm -hmm. but I still wanted to honor the Chesapeake. So mm -hmm. honestly found the name through a, through a Google search. <laughs> yeah, oh, cool. I started looking for, in, you know, I think I was typing in things like interesting Chesapeake names, you uh -huh. know, and, and things like that. And after hundreds and hundreds of different choices and options, mm -hmm. you know, I saw that and said, I like that. And that's where it came from. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. Well, you're Maryland's smallest brewery, producing yeah. just one barrel at a time, yet you have about 20 beers on tap, including several cast beers. So mm -hmm. talk about how you're able to brew so many different beers despite being a small brewery. Uh, lots of labor, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, one of the things about being a small brewery is it, it takes just as much uh, hours in the day, just as much labor mm -hmm. to brew one batch uh, or one barrel versus say 10 or 20 barrels. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's still a six, seven, eight hour brew day, no matter how you slice it. Um, so uh, yeah, I hate to say it, but unfortunately I'm just kind of killing myself doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, there is no other secret to it. Okay. Yeah. And I think it, you mentioned that you'd uh, brewed over 367 different beers in just a little over a year that you've been open? Uh, two years. Okay. Yeah, two, uh, we, okay. we just had our two year anniversary okay. this, uh, actually a month ago today. Okay. Actually, yeah. Actually Excellent. a month ago today, yeah. It's still, it's still a lot of different beers, yeah. uh, you know, in that short period of time. It is. Lots and lots of small batches. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes we even take one, one, one barrel batch and split it into two different things. Oh, okay. So I might transfer out of the fermenter and, and maybe age agent on something different or just do something different to it. Mm -hmm. So that, that definitely keeps the variety going. <laughs> For sure. Tell me a little bit about uh, not necessarily having particular flagship beers, but just mm -hmm. constantly rotating styles and things like that. When, when I set out to do this, mm -hmm. I just made a rule for myself. We are not going to have a flagship. I didn't want to be one of these breweries that has four beers, mm -hmm. you know, and you're always going to get this. And with the setup that we have, with the tiny system, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, just fits perfectly into doing small batches. Yeah. So why limit ourselves to only a couple styles? So, sure. you know, we have, I mean, even right now on tap, we have German beers, English beers, American uh, no Belgians on at this moment, but we you know we rotate through all those kind of things. Right. Um, there's no, there's just no rules to to yeah you know, we have to always have this. Now, over time, there's been a couple beers that have sort of evolved into almost always being here, just because the regulars get mad when they're not here. But <laughs> but even even then, yeah, you know, we might go a month without having something. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. that's great. Are there any particular styles, because you can do so many different ones, that you like to do just to introduce people to different styles of beer they're not familiar with, or? It, it, yeah, you know, I'll tell you, I, I love English style beers. Mm -hmm. we, I don't like being categorized as an English style brewery. I mean, I think right now we have one, two on tap, so mm -hmm. it's not out of 24, so it's not yeah, exactly yeah. like we're strong on English, you know, uh, heavy on English beers. Uh -huh. um, but I like the style, and I think they're a great beer for folks that might not, you know, we get a lot of people that come in and say, oh, I don't like hops. I don't want real bitter beers. Mm -hmm. So English styles are perfect for that. German styles are perfect for that, uh, mm -hmm. other than the Pilsners. Mm -hmm. uh, so we always have, you know, we, you know, we have a Kolsch or a Red Kolsch uh, that we developed uh, that's pretty much here, you know, I'd say 80% of the time. Mm -hmm. um, something like the, uh, the Nut Brown that I'm drinking now, mm -hmm. that's a you know, an very traditional English Nut Brown. Um, but at the same time, we might do something completely wacky and uh, do a Nut Brown you know, aged on coconut or huh. or some other, yeah, you know, really whatever I kind of come up with at the moment. Right. Well, that's yeah. the beauty of the, yeah. the small brewery. Then, yeah. right? I mean, you can experiment and it lets me take risks yeah. too. Because if I mean, worst case is if I if I really mess something up, yeah, I'm only dumping a barrel of beer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which knock on wood, have not done yet. Good. <laughs> yes. That's good. And then you have quite a few cask beers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, that's something we're hearing more and more about uh, when we talked with Rob at Checker Spot. He has Steve yeah. Marsh with him there, the, mm -hmm. the great cask whisperer from Heavy Seas. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, they're always going to have a cask one. Um, right. But a lot of places don't, and you just don't have one. You have several. So tell yeah. me about the... Yeah, we keep eight, eight beer engines. We have a... Behind the... the uh, 
behind the back bar, we have a separate cask cooler. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we keep everything separate. We, we try to do cask right. Uh, drives me absolutely batty, quite honestly, when I see a, a bar or a brewery that just throws a cask on the bar and say, hey, look at us, we have cask ale. Yeah. And meanwhile, you know, it's warming up to 70 degrees, and then they tell you, oh, yeah, it's supposed to be room temperature. No, none of that's true. Mm. And it just gives cask a bad name. So we're trying to do it the right way. Okay, that's awesome. How's the reception been for that? Since again, it's different, and people aren't normally used to that. It is. It's 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 it's, it's been an introductory. You know, mm -hmm. it, we definitely sell more draft than cask. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we also have twice or three times the offerings too. Sure. So um, so we're going to sell more naturally. But uh, um, but we absolutely developed a regular following of of cask ale lovers for sure. That's cool. That's awesome. Um, well, you have a bit of a unique program that many breweries around here don't have, uh, and that's the guest brewer program. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not what most people think of when they hear cast that. So tell our listeners what your program is about and then how you're able to do something like that with mm -hmm. a small batch brewery. Well, it, it, it actually is enabled by the fact that we're small batch. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we have a brewer. For, it's kind of more of a brewer for a day program. Mm -hmm. So somebody can sign up, come in, they can... Um, they can tell us what they want to brew. If they have a recipe, you know, we'll work with them with that recipe. Mm -hmm. Or most of the time, it's more of an idea. Yeah, I have an idea for something, uh, but maybe I've never brewed before, or I brewed once, yeah. uh, something like that. Mm -hmm. And you know, they'll come in. I'll, I'll finalize the recipe with them. They come in, spend the day brewing, mm -hmm. uh, and typically because we. Uh, we're one barrel, but we actually do we do two one barrel batches side by side. It's kind of my normal brew day. So okay. we have we actually have two separate one barrel systems back there. Uh -huh. And uh, so in the course of the brew day, their 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 brewer for the day program, they're going to brew their beer. They'll get to name it. Um, then come back later for a happy hour, mm -hmm. you know, like a release party basically for for their for their beer. Mm -hmm. And at the same time too, I'll be brewing a second beer with them, so they'll actually get kind of double the experience uh, on the brewer for the brewer day. Mm -hmm. And they they get you know come in, they get dirty, they, they start from, you know, starting sanitizing the pumps all the way to cleaning up at the end of the day. Okay. Yeah. And clearly you've had a lot of interest as they, well shoot, that there's a wall full of... Uh, yeah, we've, we, it took forever for us to put that wall up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, we have a, a, a wall that is, and there's probably another dozen that we haven't gotten up there yet wow. uh, that are slow, you know, we're slowly adding the frames to the, to the wall and mm -hmm. it's our, kind of our guest brewer wall of fame. Mm -hmm. yeah. So clearly and, a lot of interest in that. With yeah, that. and if you look at the styles that uh -huh. are over there, you'll mm -hmm. see some of the most creative things. Uh, you know, I, I like to think of myself as somewhat creative, mm -hmm. but uh, some of the most creative ideas have come from the guests. Oh, and um, I mean, just literally things I would never have thought of. And a few of them have evolved into either, either beers that we keep on in rotation or maybe flavor, flavor profiles that... Uh, um, like we had one guest brewer who wanted to put uh, Earl Grey tea on an English uh, English bitter, uh -huh. and since then we've used Earl Grey, Grey on three, four, five other beers just because oh, wow. it worked out so well. Uh -huh. uh, so little little things like that. That's great. Um, so how exactly does that work? How does someone, if they're interested and they're listening to this or watching mm -hmm. this, and they would say, "Hey, that is really cool. I yeah. want to do that." When they contact you, how does that process yeah. work? Uh, there's two ways. One is uh, we have a, a loyalty program where mm -hmm. you basically you get a point. Per dollar that you spend, like a lot of places, uh -huh. um, when you get to a thousand points, you can trade it in for uh, to be a guest brewer. Okay, and we're getting you know, a lot of people do that, or you can also just buy the package. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, that's awesome. Um, well, you know, talk about the local badge that you have on Untapped. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, yeah. a, a few places have them, but yours again is a little unique because it you kind of give people rewards for leveling up as opposed to just earning it one time. Right. Yeah. It's um. So Untapped, in, in all honesty, has taken me a long time to embrace. It's, it's a wonderful tool for being able to, you know, to check in beer, see what you've drank. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it also has some nice, uh, it has a nice marketing reach. So mm -hmm. we're able to use the badge. You know, the local badge is something we just did six weeks ago, maybe mm -hmm. uh, the, when uh, when they came out. They, mm -hmm. they finally just made them available. So we weren't we were one of the first in the area to jump on that local mm -hmm. badge thing, and. I can't remember the levels off the top of my head, but maybe mm -hmm. five, ten, fifteen, something like every five or ten levels. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have a, yeah, stickers, pint glasses, um, t-shirts, things like that that we give you as a little reward for being loyal to us. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes hand in hand with our other loyalty program. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, you know, the the the, <laughs> the negative part of Untapped are the 
you know, the false experts out there, it drives me crazy. Yeah, I think uh, if you, you, you know, for you know, looking at kind of trying to find a middle road on that, um, if it's not a particular style that's your style that you like, you mm -hmm. take that into account. And so you either don't rate it yeah. or you go, you Which know, I think is fine. and I've got a lot of friends who do that. Yeah. I've got, a, you know, a friend, of, and friend of mine, Joe, we both mm -hmm. are not big fans of coffee and coffee flavor in our beer. Right. And, uh, you know, and, and, if, and that's in a style and sure. it says that, that's great. You know, we, we hate when we get surprised by a style yeah, reporter yeah, yeah, where yeah. someone doesn't tell you. But if they tell you. Yeah, but if you're ordering a coffee style, right, then don't you, slam it because exactly. you don't like coffee. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> we look at if, if you say it and we're not into it, then we don't order. Right. Yeah. But, was, you know, if we have a stout or a porter that didn't yeah. say it was in there and we have it, right. you know, we'll just go, and hey, we're not going to rate that. Because right, that's not, makes sense. because I don't want to you know affect someone else who yeah. might actually pay attention to it and yeah. say, well, you don't like it, you right. know, and and you have a lot of check-ins, so I should you know trust well, and, what and people you don't say. realize, uh, you know, you know, they don't realize, okay, that one, you know, that's hurting us, it's hurting our reputation because because right. there are so many people, unfortunately, mm -hmm. that go by these ratings, which mm -hmm. I think should not happen either. Mm -hmm. I would I would love on tap actually if you just got rid of the ratings, mm -hmm. just do check-ins, mm -hmm. do all the other things that it does. I think it'd be fantastic, mm -hmm. but the, the ratings just drive me batty. Yeah, so. yeah. And then they move to tenths of points, so yeah. you know now you know okay yes this is a three point six, not a three point seven or a three point five. I'm like, are you joking? Are you? Who's that? Yeah, you know, they gave just, that yeah. as uh, as I know a lot of the guys do. They gave that as if you're a like, supporter and you contribute. Yeah, I was gonna say like a, it's an upgrade. Then, thing, then it yeah. opens that up. But otherwise, I mean, and and I looked at that and I you know I feel like that's too much. Oh, it's, it's, it's just it's crazy. too much of an nth degree yeah. because who's to say this is a, a three point seven or three point eight? Right. Or so, I, I mean, like, tell me what the difference between that is. I mean, yeah. yeah so, I mean, our first our very first one with a tenth was like a three point nine. Mm -hmm. I'm like, really? It was a you know. It's almost not a four. quite a four, <laughs> uh, you know. Yeah. Anyway, it's it just it, sorry. No, it's, mean to get off track. On no, that. no, and it's it's good. Well, again, everybody has yeah. different experiences, and clearly they've got their footprint out in the craft beer industry. Yeah. So, you know, how do you navigate it's, that? If if it works for evil. you and people yeah. like it and they embrace yeah. it, how do you do that? If you don't, how do you navigate through it? So, mm. you know, it is interesting to hear that while that <laughs> might not be, you know, what you want to do to have represent your beers out there for people, right. you do understand a marketing right. connection and go, how do I find that middle? ground and that's why I'm like I said I resisted it for the longest time sure. you know it's just because I, I and I personally don't I've never checked in a bear mm -hmm. I don't I don't do it mm -hmm. um, but uh, when they I guess it's, it's probably been two months now whenever they came out with the uh, the local badge mm -hmm. um, I immediately said yes yeah. you know it, despite the fact I'm like I'm like yes I hate you people <laughs> but, <laughs> yes take and and by the way it's like 50 extra bucks a month it's not a it's not yeah. a free thing, so it's, right. I know. think we were talking with Dave at Brewery Fire, and yeah. they were saying that, and, and it was like a year commitment. Um, yeah, I don't even and, know what I, I'm not. Gosh, really, I don't even because, know what I committed to because there aren't because <laughs> there aren't you know a lot of people that are doing mm. it enough to say well how does that work? Right. You know everybody knows about the badges that yeah. they use on tap, but the local ones are like I said they're a little different. You I don't think, see as many. But see, I here. like that though. I, I yeah. actually think that's a cool part of Untap. Absolutely. So, you know, so I think. Uh, I think on tap sixty bucks a month just to have the account, and then it's another mm -hmm. so it's another fifty. So we're paying one hundred and ten bucks a month now on tap. Yeah. Um, you know, which ticks me off too. But sure. I, I see it. I see every everything except for the ratings. I love. Right. <laughs> you know, I would I would be all over it if it were. Uh, in fact, I've even asked them like, you know, we've we've just started using the events portion. Yeah, there are ways to put your events in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's halfway useful. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like for example, I had put the. Uh, we had something. Oh, it was our birthday oh, mm -hmm. last month. You yeah. know, I put our birthday in in mid January or early January. I guess it's February eighth was our, our event, and mm -hmm. I think I put it in right around the first of January. Well, it just got buried. There was like there's no event reminder, so oh. so we we were literally standing right here in the bar, right. and everybody's going on on tap. Like, can't find the event. Like, hmm. You know, you would think that would there would be like some pop up that would say this is happening this week or something. Yeah, and, and it, yeah. it seems to get lost. So. You know, I had sat. I sat there, and I entered in four months worth of events that we had planned. And now I realize I did all that, and you have to do each one manually too. There's oh, no. Uh, no it's not. It's not an easy. easy. Yeah, it's not. Drop a, down menus that, or something. Yeah, the back office is not easy. So even yeah. like for like if we have a weekly karaoke, for example, mm -hmm, yeah. um, I can't do karaoke and then just put each weekend like you could like on a Facebook event or something mm -hmm, else. Mm -hmm. Have to enter in each one of them. Oh, but I, yeah. so I did all that all at once, and then I realized, oh, they're all buried. You yeah, know, like, and they're not popping up like. So I, I would love that. I mean, I would love that to be fixed. I would love to have um, 
uh, what, what, what's like the gating where like if you come into the area and something pops up, hey, this is in your area. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, I, and I would pay for that actually. You yeah. know, so an untapped user is driving down Route Three. Right. Oh, hey, Brewery right there. I, I think that's actually pretty valuable. Yeah, yeah. So, Notification, but, yeah. Like, that, like a, the they call that that area the geo. Oh, geo fencing. That's oh, what it's called. Okay. Yeah, where so you get within three miles of you know, like you set a radius, and then uh -huh. within three miles it pops up. You know, Chesapeake. It's happy hour or you know, there or karaoke night or you know whatever's sure. popping up. I'd actually pay extra for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, but anyway, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, well, where can people find you online? You know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, things like that. Yep. So we are we, we try to do most of our marketing through Facebook. Okay. Uh, which I realize is not everybody's thing, but um, it's pretty broad based. Uh, we have an Instagram page now, okay. uh, which is maybe two months old at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're just getting going on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And of course our webpage at brewcrab.com. Uh, brewcrab mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good one, yeah. brewcrab. Yeah. Brewcrab, yeah. So I, there was no chance I was gonna do a domain, you know, chesapeakerealalebrewery.com and expect anybody to figure out how to spell <laughs> that. And, and so, uh, so yeah, so I tried to simplify it. So just brewcrab. Yeah, yeah. that was good. And that's um, also our Facebook, uh, so slash brewcrab. So everything's at brewcrab? Except for-, for handle handles? Except for Instagram, which is actually at Chesapeake, okay. uh, um, Chesapeake Real Ale Brewery. I think we actually did the whole name on that because mm -hmm. we had an early employee who tried to set up a page for Instagram, butchered it, and that used up our brew oh, crab name. They wouldn't so, fix it for you. So. No. So, uh, so we had to work around that. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. well, well, we'll get that up on our show notes and uh, put it up Excellent. on our website at sharepintpodcast.com. Nice, thanks. Um, you bet. Uh, we've learned about the brewery, so let's mm -hmm. get to know you a little bit better, John. Tell us sure. about your role here. Uh, well, I'm the uh, I'm I'm the owner um, and the brewer and the floor sweeper and uh, the assistant brewer and and all the things in the back. So uh, right now, mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing I do everything in the back of the house, mm -hmm. uh, and then we have a great staff up here in the front of the house that takes care of the the bartending and everything you see in the tap room. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my my next big goal is to to be able to actually hire an assistant brewer, and you know, as we as we keep progressing into Profitability, I'll be able to afford one at some point. Mm -hmm. And then, the space-wise, let's say mm -hmm. that happens, do you have the ability, should you choose to, to expand beyond the oh, one yeah. or two barrel? Yeah, when we lease the place uh, yeah. and then did the design, it is meant to have a larger system side by side with the smaller system. Okay. Um, I don't ever want to get rid of the smaller system, but mm -hmm. I would love to have the, the larger one next to it. Because mm -hmm. uh, right now we're, we're so small that we can't really do any distribution and that would really be the next big step. And, okay. and we, get, we get bars and restaurants that call us weekly, hey, can we get a tap of X, Y, or Z? Right. And the answer is always no, because we, we, you know, we don't have a backup keg to even send you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? and, yeah. and then not only, you know, okay, yes, we sent it to you. Um, and then when you say, great, we, we drank that, we want another one, then you know, I have to say, sorry, we don't have that. Right. <laughs> so, it's, so having the bigger system would be a huge step forward. And, uh, I keep going back and forth whether you know I need to go through a like a fundraising mm -hmm. effort to do that, and, mm -hmm. and I'm getting closer and closer to wanting to do that actually. Okay. So yeah. it was potentially part of the business plan to say, hey, down the road we may look to expand oh, beyond yeah. what we're doing. Absolutely. And, okay. uh, in fact, uh, so in the in the in the brewery design, we built our floor drain down the middle, sort of the middle of the floor, mm -hmm. with the idea that small system on one side, the larger system on the other, so everything would flow into the drain. Oh, okay. So it's, it's there, the infrastructure's there, it's just oh. a matter of the equipment now. Sure. And honestly, a couple years ago, we were close to pulling the trigger on doing it right on day one. Uh -huh. uh, we had so many delays with the county that uh, it ate up so much of that budget that uh, it just, it, you know, it became unaffordable at that point. Right, right. Well, tell us how you got started in the craft beer industry. Um, started, uh, it, Brewed my first batch of beer in 1984, um, uh, homebrew, homebrew batch. Uh -huh. uh, that year, this is down in down in Virginia. There was a there was actually a local craft brewer, micro brewer back then, mm -hmm. um, uh, who was way way ahead of his time, uh, and he's long long since gone. But uh, I had started driving down. He was he was about 40 minutes from where I was, and I would drive down, and and he kind of taught me everything. Um, the basics, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'd go down, and brew with him, be his, be his, uh, his laborer, uh -huh. you know, learn how to dig out the mash tun and all that kind of stuff. And <laughs> and so he taught me a lot. Uh, it gave me the bug. A um, few years later, uh, you know, the, that bug kind of kept growing. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, a few years later, I said, yeah, I'm going to do this. And this is at this point the early '90s. So in 1994, I opened my first brewery. Thought I was thought I was going to be a brew pub. Ended up just being a brewery, pr production brewery. Okay. And uh, 
we kind of grew pretty fast. Uh, so we, you know, we had gotten to the point where by 1999 we were one of the 20, 20 largest uh, um, microbreweries and one of the 50 largest breweries in the country. Mm. Um, got, I, I sold all that in 2001 or 2000, late 2000, uh -huh. and stepped away for a while. And the bug was always there though. Okay. So I, when I moved to Maryland uh, about 10 years ago, I saw the landscape was just starting to change. And one of the big things for me was that uh, breweries were now allowed to have tap rooms. Mm -hmm. That was just becoming a thing. So okay. back in the 90s, you know, we had a large production brewery, but we couldn't sell you a beer. You know, okay. uh, yeah. you, know, you, could come, you could come in for a tour, we could give you a sip of something, mm -hmm. you could buy a t-shirt and go away. We couldn't sell you a beer to go, we couldn't sell you, you, know, you couldn't sit around and have a pint. Yeah. Uh, and that, you know, that always, was annoying, but right. that was the law. Right. And so as I saw the laws changing here in Maryland, I thought, wow, I might want to do this again. And then here in Anne Arundel County, mm -hmm. um, it wasn't until 2015 that they changed the zoning laws to allow a brewery, a brewery space to go into anything other than heavy industrial. So up until then, it was heavy industrial zoning only. Okay. And if you look at the county map, there was like this one tiny, <laughs> tiny little pinpoint yeah. that was heavy industrial. I, I still don't even know where it was. Uh, mm -hmm. it, so it basically kept breweries out of the county. Sure. Uh, so the, I guess it was the 2015 General Assembly and then the county rules that would change that right after that to allow for some other versions of industrial zoning, which allowed us to come into a industrial space like this. Oh, okay. And that, that was when I, when I saw that, I said, all right, I'm doing this. <laughs> and still took a couple of years to get open from there. Sure, yeah. sure. But, um, so you kind of touched on it a little bit, but mm -hmm. uh, expand maybe on what are your biggest challenges have been? Like it's feeling? The, the, the biggest challenge early on. So we, you know, I, the building that we're sitting in, I signed the lease in 2015. We opened in early 2018. Mm. Um, spent 10 months fighting with the health department here in Anne Arundel over, despite the fact that the health department has no jurisdiction mm. at all over breweries anywhere in the state, um, just because there's no food involved. So it's not, a, it just doesn't come under their purview. Okay. Um, despite that, they held up our building plans for 10 months because wow. they kept saying, well, where's your kitchen? We kept saying, we don't need a kitchen. And the response back would be, okay, so where's your kitchen? And you have this circular argument for right. literally for 10 months. Wow. Um, while we were paying rent on an empty space. Mm -hmm. um, which is part of where the big, bigger uh, brew system went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, um, so things like that were challenging for mm -hmm. sure. Um, yeah, but we, we got through it. Mm -hmm. And so now, the, so now the bigger challenge or the, the ongoing challenge is just uh, trying to make customers happy, get them in the door, get them to come back again. And uh, you know, our only goal here is to be the kind of the Crofton neighborhood brewery. We're not looking to sell beer in Frederick. We're not looking to sell beer in Philadelphia. You mm -hmm. know, uh, you know, all we want to do is be the local brewery. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so far so good. Okay. Well, that kind of segues nicely into telling me how you were able to stay committed during these difficult times. <laughs> um, I know it's a, it's a silly answer, but I think once you're in, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound at that mm -hmm. point. <laughs> so there was, you know, once you're, you know, once you've got a lease signed and once you've got equipment sitting there, um, there's no turning back. Right. <laughs> so it's, right. so you just keep fighting. Um, yeah, and that's really what happened. Yeah, I, I think that's yeah. it. We're hearing more and more as we talk to different breweries, the same type yeah. of thing. They're like, you get to a point where you're like, we don't have a choice. We, just, we have to succeed. No yeah. matter what it is, we just have to find a way. Well, yeah, exactly. And I mean, here in the, you know, they said here, here with Anne Arundel, being the first to open Anne Arundel, we had to, we had to teach them some of the rules. You know, the right. building department had no clue what to look at with a, you know, okay, so what is a brewery? Yeah. You know, so we had to explain, you know, all right, we're not a, you know, we're not a big factory, right. you know, we're not, uh, you know, and I tried to, I, I remember one day describing to the, I think it was the, maybe the, one of the head of the building department, I was like, mm -hmm. you know, we could pretty much, I, I was telling him, you know, look, I could pretty much build our entire brew system in your kitchen, yeah. you know, maybe a tiny bit bigger, but not much bigger than what would go in your kitchen. Right. And, uh, and I think that opened up, because you know, I, I think they're thinking, oh, well, gosh, I visited Williamsburg 20 years ago, and I went to the Anheuser-Busch factory, that's what you're building? And yeah. I was like, no, <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> yeah, so, and I, you know, I think once they get over that, uh, so we had a, you know, despite the health department issue, we had a lot of great support actually from people in the county. Mm -hmm. the, um, the folks at the, the county liquor board were fantastic. Um, the building department was great. Fire department was great. It was really just once you had to get through just a little bit of a learning curve more, mm -hmm. than, more than anything. 
And I'm finding that's more and more when I talk to different breweries, it's interesting that the counties are so, um, I don't know, a better way to put it other than just kind of they segregate themselves off. But completely. I mean, it's not, it's not oh, like completely. Anne Arundel County can talk to Howard County or Baltimore and other places yeah. that have these breweries and say, hey, for example, these breweries in this county talk to those people, how right. that works to help here if you're, oh, you know, pioneering exactly. the trail. But that's a, And that's exactly how that 10 month period ended. Uh -huh. uh, I finally, and the other thing, of course, you know, the, I'm not going to say her name, but the, I mean, the woman would never answer the phone. She would never return calls. Mm -hmm. Finally, you know, 7.30 a.m. that morning, I, I get her on the phone and, uh, you know, and she's like, well, where's your kitchen? You know, same thing. So yeah. Going back in this cir circular yeah. argument, where's your yeah, kitchen? Yeah. You don't need a kitchen. Yeah. Um, so then finally, I was like, please do me one favor. Yeah. Um, Pick any county in the state. I don't care. I'm not going to tell you which one. Yeah. I said, just find one that has a, so we're a, in, in state terms or a class five brewery. So I said, just pick any other state or any other county in the state that has a class five brewery. Right. Call your counterpart, please. Yeah. Tell us what to, you know, tell, just ask them, what did they do? Right. So, and I'm not joking. This was a 7.30, 8 a.m. conversation, mm -hmm. 1 p.m., get an email. Uh, we've signed off on your building plans because we have no jurisdiction over your point. Yeah, I'm saying, look, okay, uh, this is exactly what I told you 10 months ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, well. but, so you talk about not, you know, so fortunately she was able to talk to a counterpart at another county, but she could have easily have done that 10 months earlier too. Sure. You know, not wasted way too much time and money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So what contributed to your success? Especially during those difficult times and you said you get to a point where you're like, you're all in, you just got to yeah. figure it out. But what contributed to being successful? I think the, you know, we started, once, once we got, not even, once we started building, not even, uh, not even before, I was, I was very, very hesitant to announce that we were even opening mm -hmm. until I was fairly certain of the timeline. Sure. And even with that, we were two months late, even from that, right. <laughs> from, even from that big buffered timeline. Yeah. Uh, what I didn't want to do was big, make this big splash announcement that says, we're opening on such and such a day. And then six months more go by and nobody hears from us. Right. And you're, you know, so I, I was very, very careful to announce it. So in the end, we only announced that we were opening about three months before we opened. Okay. And the way, one of the things that we did right from the beginning was really embrace just the you know, folks here locally. I, had, I actually had you know, dozens and dozens of people come over and drink beer in my basement you know, when I was doing <laughs> test batches, uh -huh. um, trying to just get, you know, get the word out that, hey, you know, there's this idiot that's about to open a brewery in Crofton. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, his beers aren't terrible, or, you know, that kind of thing. Right. And then, uh, and then the, if, if you look around all the, all the painting here, mm -hmm. we had a paint party okay. um, before there was any other, when it was just still just walls. Right. Um, we had about 30 something people come in. I, I actually set up a bunch of taps, bought pizza, and we had a big painting party. Nice. And, and I think just trying to develop a little bit of community feel to it. Sure. And I would say of those 30 something people, all but, I, I, either all of them or all but a couple of them are still regulars here. Uh, okay. Yeah, I probably should know specifically, but yeah, it seems like they're all still here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that worked is, out well then. Yeah, 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 that was fun. That was a fun day too. That's cool. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Um, well, again, remind people where they can find you online. Online, uh, uh, Brew Crab, B R E W C R A B. Uh -huh. I always have to say C R A B because it sounds a little bit like uh, C R A P. Yeah. <laughs> so brew, brewcrab.com, uh -huh. uh, Facebook slash Brew Crab, mm -hmm. and Instagram, Chesapeake Real Ale Brewery. Uh, we have no Twitter, um, never will. Oh. <laughs> um, and that's really that's how you find us uh, okay. again most most everything uh, is up to date on Facebook first mm -hmm. um, just because that's the easiest way to update events and everything so sure. and we have a you know full calendar of weekly events that we do great again well we'll put that up on our show notes on yeah. our website well John I want to thank you for your time and for sharing a pint with me ah, well thank you appreciate yeah. it share a pint is released bi-weekly on Friday mornings and can be found at sharepintpodcast.com. Follow us on Twitter at share underscore pint. Show notes for this episode are available at sharepintpodcast.com. Music for the show, Groundwork, provided by Kevin McLeod and can be found online at incompetech.com. Sharepint is made possible by help from the Community Media Center of Carroll County. Associated with the craft beer industry and have an interesting story you'd like to share on a future episode? Let us know. We'd love to hear from you. You can reach us at sharepinepodcast.com or email us at jerry at sharepinepodcast.com. Until the next time we share a pint, I'm Jerry Hollow. Prost.